Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Sandy Sembler, and she is a woman embodiment um, specialist who works with uh, wonderful things. I just, I, it, It's amazing. She's telling me all the different things she does, and I can't wait for her to share it with you. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency. And they help the little businesses grow to become bigger businesses. They don't believe in paying tons of money for marketing. They don't want to see little businesses get scammed. So check out dmaworld.com and look at all the great things they could do for you. Mark is one of the main contacts there, and he'd love to help you. So once again, it's dmaworld.com. Now, mm -hmm. Sandy, tell everybody a little about what you do. And I'm just, and I'm just so excited to have you on this show because it's amazing, you know, all the knowledge that you share with me and all the wonderful things that you do. Mm, thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we, we hit it off, right? We hit it off. Yeah. It goes. So yeah, thank you. So I'm Sandy Sembler and I am, I founded Sacred She. Sacred She is an international women's program. And it really was founded from my own personal healing journey um, after an intervention with Tony Robbins about a decade ago. Uh, it was brought to my attention very firmly after four hours of, of being with him in front of everybody that I was really leading my life from, from the masculine. And I didn't even understand exactly what that meant and the terms that I want to explain here. Um, it, it, it's a, it was formed there. Sacred She was basically my healing journey to get to where I am now um, to heal You know, a lot of the pieces that had me still picking up on um, childhood patterns that had me choosing wrong in relationships, staying a little bit longer in work environments may not have, su have suited me, um, really living in, in the shadow. And I love to really basically guide the modern day woman to liberate her path and unapologetically reclaim and rewild her unique voice and, and, and intuition. And I really believe that we do that through our, through our expression. And I believe that art is in our emotions. Art is in our everyday life. And so that makes life very exciting. If you really show up for the world in a way where your life, your life is your prayer. Life is a living prayer. How are you going to show up that way? Yeah. Um, to me, when I think about that and you, you attach that to the playground that we live in, you right. know, we get to play. And so I realized a decade ago uh, with, after that, I, I needed to know more because I was mentoring a lot of women at the time. And there were so many women that, that were under my umbrella and all around the world. It didn't matter that they were super successful in business, not really fulfilled in other areas of their life. And I realized that that was me as well. And it really affected my relationship with my son, um, obviously with my father. And it was around the relationship I had within my own masculine. And um, so I like to really you know, chat about that, although it's kind of buzzy now when I first found this work, it was it was not. Now it's, it's all over. And I, I've moved because it's within us, right? It's within oh, yeah. us. Yeah. So uh, it, it's fascinating. It just started off with working with women who had been trauma based, had been maybe abused. That was my my history. I had left an abusive marriage when my son was young and uh, then realized that we're constantly abusing ourselves in other ways. And I didn't want to live in that story. I wanted to actually be this this a victor. And so then that's when I started studying attachment styles and trauma and how those pieces show up too. Um, I love to learn. I'm like you when you and I were chatting. I, I've studied with teachers around the world. Like I love to learn um, like podcasts and anything I can to really, really, really um, not just hone my craft, but just, just understand humanity. Yeah. And I, I just realized how much that people don't know that they don't know that they don't know that they can truly choose an emotion. Yeah. Like you can lead yourself to healing, uh, but you must feel to heal. And so I had done all this work. Um, I was in India a couple of times and came home and still was still feeling a little off. Um, and then I realized that everything was in my head, everything was in my brain, all my knowledge, nothing had really seeped down to this beautiful body that God had given me. Yeah. And I recognized I was doing it again, everything logically. And there's need for that, like you and I spoke of. Yeah. And there's also something I, I consider like my IV, but yeah. it's blockage so it can get all in my cells. And most of the women, honestly, I, I most of the women I find that first come to work with me have the hardest time tapping in to joy. 
Right. And I really love to, to, to mention that because I know your passion for health and people to live their, their most fullest expression and not get hung on, on, you know, I am anything. You can be whatever you are, but yeah. to really tap into that infinite wisdom that starts with joy that we don't have to be, say, do anything. We are born that way, just right. like we're unworthy and uh, nothing can ever change that. It's just, it's just the residue of life that yeah. can tend to remind us of, of that. So yeah, it's a, a, we, we have different programs and such that we work with, but I, I love to chat about how that whack-a-mole moment will come when you don't realize that you're feeling a feeling and then squashing it and saying that that's not right. We actually honor it. And because the first 90 seconds of an emotion is real, anything after that is a choice. And when I learned that, I realized that yeah, I could be a hot mess and a hot mess is not a bad thing if your heart's open, right? right? I need to be fully expressed. But if I'm tending to go on after that, meaning that if I'm in my emotions so much, yeah. that I'm drunk from the hormones of the emotions and, and that then I need, I need to take a deeper inquiry. So I like to tie all these different modalities and theta healing and I study the brain um, and hypnosis and meditation and moving meditation, nonlinear meditation and bring it all here while wow. we're also just getting to know who the heck you are. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So that's, that's a long introduction, but it, the main thing is, is that to be able to feel what you feel unapologetically. Um, and you'll find that once we're aligned with who we are internally with those emotions, then life gets a heck of a lot easier. Oh a yeah. A lot easier. Yeah. I feel like, you know, a lot of times people I've seen in in many relationships, you know, people make people feel guilty because of the way they feel, but everyone has the right to feel a certain way. Sure. They shouldn't, they shouldn't feel guilty for feeling angry or for feeling a certain way. And, you know, I like the fact that you had mentioned, which was a surprise to me that the first 90 seconds of your emotion is your emotion. And after that, you it's the the exaggerated not exaggerated but like the it's it's the part of you that is feeding onto it like a leech you know and, totally yeah and so it's what, a habit it's a habit it literally is a habit because we can get addicted to our problems I mean I'm sure and with all the engagements and things that you see when someone first finds you for example their yeah. identity has become you know their their disease or their disorder or their breakup or whatever it is you know just like me I see it all the time right and so instead of identifying with that it's like can we act and you get significance f- from it and there's like a there's a there's this big serotonin push and this dopamine rush and yeah. that's why you and I felt great when I got off the phone with you earlier when we did our trial run. And yeah, it felt so great to connect with someone, and it was like this feels so great to to find someone that I'm in flow with, and I felt happier. Well, people still feel that way. If you and I would have been complaining and all of that, which we didn't, we right. still probably would get that same pick pick up pick me up. Yeah, um, we may have dropped a lot faster, but that's why I say people can get addicted to their problems. So yeah. If we're addicted to our problems. Can we actually choose joy? Can we choose celebration? Um, can we choose to be able to be okay to brag about ourselves? Like right. when I said, I wanted to pull out my pom-poms when I you know, was asking about you and, you know, I'm sure all your listeners know how fabulous you are, but I just sat there and just listened to you give yourself permission to actually share with me your accolades, because girl, I can tell you if I ask most women that they are so well, nothing. It's not a big deal. Not and and they because they don't want to stand in their power and be proud. Um, so I give per- women per- permission to brag, permission mm-hmm. to, to like I'm so proud of me. <laughs> it sounds silly, but we all are a little girl inside of us. We and are. I realized my little girl. She she went away a long time ago, and um, you know, a decade ago, I found her again. And yeah. I, I I honestly would have started doing that work. I, it's it's the inner ch- inner teenager that I think we we neglect the most. And that's a, not, a whole nother way I like to teach is to work with her because she's the one that's pissed off that she wasn't seen. Yeah. Um, right. So literally imagining that your little girl is with you and she's with you. And so you talk to her like you would like your daughter. And hey, what do you think about these people, Simone? I named her Simone <laughs> for dinner. And you like really like get down on your knees and look her yeah. in the eye and feel her um, just like we did. If we would do, if we have a child, um, because yeah. I read that so much of us don't, don't do that. The, the entertainment right. yourself is a whole nother conversation. And that's, that, that's, that's got, um, 
is a little rough and tough, but she still wants to be seen because yeah. the feminine in all of us, men included, is not gender specific. Want to be seen, heard, understood, and feel safe. Yes. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think if we had more men who were comfortable and women who would uh, who would actually allow it to be and change their belief system around it, that yeah. we need more men that are comfortable in their feminine energy. I mean, yeah. their, their intuition and their, their heart um, versus so logic. And I think yeah. if we had more women who didn't feel they had to compete with men to be who the heck they are, live right. in the heart, um, the world would be a better place. I, I really believe that. And I think that, the pendulum has swung so far over here that men, it's my opinion, obviously I'm being very general, but many men don't even know what it what is, if it can't even be a man. Well, we, yeah. know, especially after the Me Too movement, of course. Right, right. I think, you know, I, I love how you mentioned about finding that inner teenager in you again, you know, yeah. how, you know, so many people lose that. And I, I see that all the time and they, you know, as we get older, they, they are so Im- embolished in their, what they have to do. They're, they're doing their errands. They have a job they're doing, you know, and they forget about themselves and that self-love goes out the door yes. and so does that inner teenager. And then, you know, and then they're kind of left. They don't even, and some of these women might not even realize it. And some of these men too, that they're, they're kind of hollow inside because that mm-hmm. teenager like kind of left them. So how do you, how do you reconnect with that inner teenager? Mm. Well, I'll back up for just a second, if I may. And yeah. we'll t- Part. It will tease that apart because there and the masculine is about doing all those things you said, erranding, even mothering. Yeah. Mothering is actually quite masculine. A mother, though, is very nurturing and loving. You don't even have to do anything except just open your heart and be love. Right. Be but mothering is very masculine, right? So a lot of the things you yeah. mentioned is, and if your heart not heart connected right? And in, t- in touch with that infinite, beautiful wisdom of your heart, right? Uh, whether you're a man or a woman, it will feel like it's just another thing to do. So I'm yeah. glad we're doing this before the holidays because a way I'll just like, there's different practices I can share oh, because definitely. it's really interesting because obviously it's setting intentions, letting your masculine set the intention of, of the experience that you want to have. Like you're almost dating. Yeah. How could you date the holiday season? If yeah. you were to choose it, like, I'm going to date the holiday season, how do you want, you know, your date to feel if you yeah. were the masculine, right? And taking, taking your, your Christmas season out to date, out to dinner. Right. I actually just thought about that. I've never actually come up with that before. That's why I know that you're, you're good for me. Cause all this, it, all this flowing, when it flows to me like that, my team knows this too. It just flows. But if you're dating Christmas, right, you're dating the holiday season. Do you want to, at the end, at the end of the night, do you want to be exhausted? Do you want her to be exhausted? Yeah. Or do you want to be able to really look back in hindsight and go, that was the most delicious, scrumptious, spiritual. I feel so connected to source. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I know the reason for the season and it, it just, there's something beautiful in that. So every day can be that way. Even going to the grocery store, yeah. I, I have, uh, and I'll talk about the teenager in a second, but this is how you do it moment to moment. So if I get to know a woman, I got to know you and you shared, you know, I just got to know you, I get downloads and I could, you know, I could share some practices here, but yeah. if, if I read your intake, for example, if we were starting a new coaching relationship and I can, as someone as I have a really hard time tapping into joy or um, childhood wounds and all of that. Like there's like a skipping practice, for example, and which yeah. sounds silly, but I know for me, when I, I met um, one of my first embodiment teachers and studied under him for three years, I had gone through a really bad breakup. Mm-hmm. Uh, I swear I would, I'd said it was the last toxic relationship I'd ever be in. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm still counting on that one. Um, but I was so, I realized now addicted to sadness me of all people, like I love joy. And I was addicted to the feeling because I got significance from it as well. And it gave me this purpose, gave me something to work on versus just being in it. And so that was the first embodiment practice I received outside of like, you know, dancing and movement. And he had me practice. I, and I do this with clients, you know, for two weeks, I want you to skip in public and because you've got to be witness and you believe in the quantum physics, you know, to be aware of it, right. To acknowledge yeah. it, to accept it, to make it real. So he had me skipping all over St. Petersburg, Florida. And, um, and then I got extra points, right. If I recorded myself and then put it, you know, I sent it to my, my group. Yeah. Um, but even during COVID, you know, I would have women like, okay, I want you to skip from your computer 
to your bathroom, you know, or you go through your bat, your any door frame you go through, I want you to give yourself a hip circle, like close your eyes, feel your body, where are you tight? And I mean, that's what I mean is I know for me, sacred, she came as well because I would go to these events. Yeah. And then I come home. I go to goddess events and all the things I come home girl. And I would be like, Oh, okay. Well, what I remember, what, 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 what? And then, so I, we get that way, right? We feel like we have to yeah. get to the next thing and the next thing. And for me, um, I wanted to give practical tips and ways that you can sink in that body and talk to that teenager. So about the teenager, because a lot of people don't talk about her is um, I believe there's 10 women that li live in each woman yeah. and she's really more of the dangerous challenger in a lot of ways, even if she's not expressing it um, in the sense that if she's angry, if she wasn't seen, heard, understood, yeah. um, she can feel safe. So there's like this, um, I'm, I've always wanted to adopt older kids. And so going through uh, training, it's interesting too, is seeing how much these kids will test you, not just the teenagers, but th they will test you. Women will test. The feminine and all of us will test to see, will they stay? Can they handle me? Are you sure they love me? Am I worthy of this? And so I think just knowing these pieces alone is enough to go, if you're feeling kind of crunchy, is what part of you is not feeling loved? Have you slowed down enough to be able to say, like I said, maybe you're not looking down and saying, hey, Simone, honey, um, you want to go to the park? Maybe it's Hey, and to, to claim her, I know this, and I'm speaking from my own experiences. Yeah. My, my daddy left when I was, when I was younger and mm -hmm. we reconciled before he passed away. But I know that not having his presence affected me and my choices and, 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 and life, high achiever, picking men, you know, that fill in the blank yep. and men that were, that were tough and, um, all the things that, that we can definitely go into if you'd like, but what I really wanted was to be claimed. And that's so politically incorrect, but more of like, I've got you. Mm -hmm. Hey, I see you. I see you and I feel you. And there's not a damn thing you can do for me not to love you. Now, that doesn't mean as a parent, for example, we want our kid, we'll let our kids just go off the rails, whether however old they are. But how many of, of like for you and for me, your audience, that we are just looking for someone to even, do you really get me? Yeah. Do you really get me? Do you see me? Right. Yeah. And um, I think that that is a, that's a lost art. And I, I know for me, I, and with my women's groups that they are done online and women from around the world, like I said, and I do live events and such, but i I teach women how to basically give good zoom. You can give good zoom. You can really like be in zoom and you can actually have a beautiful relationship like you and I met. And it was like, yeah. wow. You remind me of my friend, my best friend, Rachel, who passed away during COVID. Like you're so much like Rachel is, is fascinating to me. <laughs> Not the one I've said you look like, but your energy, your yeah. energy is such a go-getter and so heart centered. Um, and so that's why a lot of women who come to me ready to reset their relationship they're in, their romantic partner, yeah. or leave it, I say, just give me 90 days. Let's just see before you control, alt, delete. Um, let me see. Cause it's amazing what learning to get in touch with your emotions, yeah. seeing that teenager for who she is in that moment. I don't care. You could be 90 years old and I can look at, you know, you know, I, and just be able to go, wow. And be yeah. curious and ask the questions. All of us want to know that someone cares about us. Yeah. And we don't have to have, be, live in a foster, a foster system to, to realize that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's so true. You know, you could be in a relationship or you can be, you can be, you know, with people and it's like, you know, you feel, all right, they know me, they love me, but do they really get me? And yeah. that could be like a barrier that could cause a wall between two people is feeling yeah. they don't get you, even though they've known you maybe a good portion of your life or so for X amount of years, you know, cause people change, you know, and you know, you really have to really learn how to connect and, and be aware and have that, that connection with each other, you know, and I, I think sometimes communication is, is the communication is key, but I think we lack it a lot of times in our society of communicating yeah. in a positive way. Well, you're going to love this because this is interesting and we'll, we'll stay in touch too. Cause I I'll send you some extra teachings on this. Yeah. I, I, my teachings are there's, there's, there's actually three levels of communication. The first level of communication is what we call baby love. It's like about your needs, what you need, what you want. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's necessary, right? Yeah. Uh, 
but it's it's really you know what's best for the moment right there even that's just about you like what about me what about me kind of a thing and and in, in, in romantic partnerships it's just again you're not meeting my needs period stage two and this is great with friends as well. This is why I only really have stage three deep friendships for this very th- reason why you brought uh, the, you brought that up. Yeah. Stage two is more that a mono a mono. You meet my needs, I'll meet your needs. That is very uh, healthy. And if we could yeah. just live there, we'd be it'd be great. But in a, in relationship, it's not super passionate or hot. And in friendship, there's not there's not a lot of polarity. And even in friendship, you know, yeah. me personally, I love the stage three, which is they they may not know my higher purpose per se. They might right. not know what it is I'm, I'm looking to at the end of the day or, you know, when I go, it, did I, how did I live? How did I love? How did I matter? But yeah. they know that I want to live a life of purpose. I mean, even if I'm going to the grocery store, how am I going to light someone up along the way just by my being? Yeah. And I want to be in partnership with, in friendships as well, where someone would say, hey, Sandy, um, are you open to a reflection or feedback? Mm-hmm which no, that's, that's the number one thing in women's work. I can tell if someone's done women's work or not because yeah. they ask permission before they just go. Cause that's what we do as women, by the way, is we want, we connect through talking and connecting. The problem is, is that sometimes we're saying things that quite frankly, the other person's not ready to hear or yeah. didn't want to, but anyway, um, so that, that part of us that actually wants to um, connect, we want to be able to, you know, be seen and be heard and come back around to the space of honoring who we are back to your teenager. So yeah. the teenager is, is in all of us. And just to honor that, that who she is and what she's about, um, not judging her for being a little honorary or ne- needy even. In yeah. fact, just loving her where she's at, because to my point, it's like, I see you. And so the friends I have are, you know, and I, I have, few of those, quite frankly, but I always make sure I'm in a, I have a sister circle or somewhere where we may not even talk is that that once a month we're sitting in circle, maybe sometimes on zoom and we ask, how are you doing? How are you really doing? Right. And what matters most to you? Yeah. And those three questions alone, if someone is really in tune to who, who you, who they are. And I just add one more thing to that. We're a mirror of everyone. Yeah, we're a mirror of our life, and sometimes that's a tough, jagged pill for me to swallow when yeah. I'm going through my own stuff. And I definitely have experienced that as of late. But if someone is feeling like they're judged, or someone's feeling like they're not fitting in, if we go deeper in the inquiry again, that's a stage three. You stage three yourself. Are you better for the world if you ask yourself? Because it generally is a reflection of something that you're not digging about yourself. Yeah. I mean, one if if you have a partner who's complaining about you, um, or if someone has a friend who's saying, you know, whatever, or you're saying it, I mean, we all judge. I know we're not not necessarily supposed to, but the truth is, it's the way we keep ourselves safe. We're always judging. Yeah. Right. It's a good space. When I decided to you know, to come on with you, you know, as my assistant gave me a you know a list of places where we were invited, opportunities, you know, I can just feel into it. Did like a minute research, and I'm like, yep, that's a good one because I trust because I'm connected. Yeah. Um, but I can promise you, those air those times when I've popped on, the guy was on a podcast last week, and I, I popped on, and it it was so interesting too because. We, the, the research was done. It wasn't that I popped on and yeah. he looked at me and I looked at him <laughs> and he said, why are you here again? And I was like, you know, it was just so great. Cause I actually said, and I, and I believe I, I treated it like it was a bad date. Yeah. I yeah, really yeah. did. <laughs> I, I tell everybody that. So there's never a bad date. You can leave a man better than you found him. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's the key. Cause otherwise they think that their bad behavior, just like us is, you know, so yeah. Stage three, it would be without using words to your point. I teach women how they can actually speak and without using all these words, which makes them actually have a lot more energy. So I went, yeah, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and he had this young tech guy like from India and he's and it, like, it's about talking about entrepreneurship. And he said, and he, cause he was like this looking down. It was, he was just really, he wasn't present. Yeah. I, I mean, us, the feminine, we're looking for, maybe not zoom redwood, but it, not only was it just rude, like his mama, like what just happened there? That kind of thing. It was, yeah. it was, but I decided just to play with it. And I was like, ouch. And I said, <laughs> and he said, what? I said, I said, um, 
I said, I'm making up that that you really uh, you really don't want to be here with me right now. And I said, that really that really hurts just like that. And he was like, well, well no, 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 no. It's not that. It's just that. I said, no, no, I get that. Everybody has days like that. I said, but I know that um, that this is like a busy time for me as well. And I'm perfectly fine if we want to um, just just got to call it a day. I got to call it a bad date. And he, he just, he was so shocked. He got straightened up. And then he said, he goes, no, no, I'm sorry. I just, he was just, and that was a loving way I could open up his heart. Yeah. Stinking back to consciousness because the masculine and generally is consciousness. Mm-hmm. Feminine is we're in our flow and our feelings and where the creative was. He was definitely a, a much more feminine being. And so I, I opened his heart, got his attention with this feminine space but then I will tell you, I was pretty much leading that conversation because he was, he just wasn't grounded. Yeah. Uh, that was a date. I would have never gone out with him again. Right. Um, right. Right. It, it was a, it ended up being great, but that's an example in the moment, how yeah. we light someone up and not leave there feeling like, because oh, good God, I could have done that too, but I, <laughs> I was able to flip it. And, um, you know, I don't know what was really going on in his life. You know, yeah. don't, you know I don't have God's eyeballs, but exactly. Um, yeah. So it, it's interesting to just know those dynamics. And um, you, you asked me when we when we spoke earlier about our friends of ours that we know or their relationships are changing. Um, they're changing. I, I don't think men go through a midlife crisis. I think they call go through the tunnel is what I call it. Okay. And we do as well, by the way, we do as well. And, um, and if, but the difference is, is that the, the brain, you know, the brain, you know, has this membrane that separates the two. The yeah. two. And as we get older, it starts to dissipate. And so what happens is why men, as they get older, they generally, generally get more loving and cuddly and all of this. And we get a little more stern is because they're going through their process here and they're finding themselves. That's why they go back into their feelings. The reason why there's the car and then maybe unfortunately the young girl or the whatever they they pick up a new hobby is yeah. they're looking for energy. They're looking for energy. And so they're getting energy from other things because generally by then, especially in long-term partnerships, what yeah. we find is that we kind of take them for granted. Yeah. So I always say, if you can be, not in a showy way, but in a generally heartfelt way, can you be more interesting than his cell phone? Can you be more interesting than the TV or whatever it is? And if he's, if he is, for example, where's my phone? If he, for example, is just on his whatever, you know, but it, like yeah. that, there's an artful way you can literally take his phone and it doesn't have to be sexual, by the way, just like with that guy, that wasn't sexual at all. Right, right, right. I mean, but it could have been if I wanted it to be an ouch can be whatever you want it to be. But yeah. there's a way that you can literally make art, which is my my thing to make art out of our emotions. Yeah. To like, so not to shame him or wrong him or criticize him, but put it aside and me be more interesting than whatever that is. You know, that's that's key um, because it is about energy. And that's yeah. why I love some of the, some of the women I've worked with. Most of them have moved on to different careers. They've either left their career and started something else, or just up level, changed their relationship because they yeah. got really with their emotions. Yeah, uh, really interesting. We call it sacred theater. Like how how can you make art out of, out of jealousy? Yeah, because we feel jealous sometimes, and how can we do that with our partner? And yeah, you know, if they're traveling. So these are things like to your point to back up about. How do we communicate? And I think it first starts with if you're if you're judging her for being jealous, then perhaps there's something within you. And there's a process to do that. And I think the world, again, the more aware we are, the better. Most people are asleep. Yeah, they're asleep. And maybe they're waking up now after what we've experienced over the last couple of years. Um, That's why we're seeing more breakups and things. People are like, wait, wait a minute. Um, Yeah, so that's communication is key. It drives me crazy whenever someone says a couple, like we just don't communicate because I believe in the art of specificity Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's really about asking questions, getting curious about someone, but also, you know, understanding them. So I I don't ever accept that at face value. I ask, I go, how do you want to feel at the end of the conversation? Right. You would feel during the conversation. Right. Because I personally believe that how we enter a relationship how we maintain it, how we repair it, yeah. and even how we leave it shows clues and um, how much we value it. Um, you, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I find it so interesting because when you were saying that, I was like, I, I, I have made that comment so many times in my own relationship. It's like, I've always felt like I was 50, 50, like half, half, half masculine, half female. And, um, and, and all of a sudden I've noticed even my husband, you know, he's become, you know, he always played the big macho guy and all of a sudden he's gotten very clear mm. and more sensitive. And I'm like, who is this man? And, yeah. and it got to the point where I felt like I've gotten more bolder and I've gotten more ballsier and he's gotten more softer. And it's like, we did a switch in our personalities and it's yes. so awkward. It really is. Yeah, I get that. No, I totally feel that. And I see it. And I, you know, I'd invite you to, I mean, there's a way to make art of it as also yeah. some is hormonally, honestly, because we, we're losing estrogen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. And then you know, there's that piece there that there's yeah. always but even if you know someone didn't want to check the hormones and they decide not to, which I don't necessarily suggest that right. one way or another, but it's to honor it for what it is, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Because if it goes on for a long time, then there, the polarity's off and oh, the yeah. polarity's off, right? There's um, it doesn't it doesn't feel good. Yeah. So it's some of it's natural, but it doesn't mean we have to accept it. It's yeah. just people say, oh, you've gone through menopause, you can't, or you will, or whatever people say. Like, no, I'll turn that on its lid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of it, right? <laughs> I know exactly what I mean. There's just so much that we can play with, and it starts with first off redefining the relationship we have with ourselves. Yeah. And what are we looking for, to get from the other person? And that's why we have this great quiz that I will we'll give your audience that yeah. it's a great polarity quiz to see. Cause just because we're a woman doesn't mean we're leading with the, with the feminine. In yeah. fact, I love the fact that you even know that because you're both, you're both. And the key is, is not to be one or the other. Like I'm at work, I'm in my masculine my right. feminine, I'm at the beach. You can literally, you, you will find that you will be not just you, but anyone you'll yeah. be less tired, um, less stress hormones. When you learn how to harmonize the two, Yeah, that's, that's key and live in the pleasure of it all, you know, finding the pleasure. Like I I'm looking at your background. I'm like, super fun. You're super <laughs> colorful. All, all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, a way to bring art and the femininity into your everyday. Like this is an Airbnb I'm in, but I came with my sheepskin. Yeah. I came with sheepskin. I came with my candles. Mm -hmm. I came, no, granted, I came with my dog. But <laughs> like my, my, these creature comfort that actually yeah. bring me so much pleasure. And again, a misnomer is people think pleasure is always about the, er the eroticism, but no, not even, not even sensuality. It's just what feels good to yeah. me. And if we can right. touch those five senses as a grounding exercise, like anxiety and such, um, it's, it, there's so many ways the body, actually the body's always working for us. Yeah. It's not, that's this way of going like, Hey, Sandy, Hey, Hey, hey pay attention. Yeah. Hey, pay attention. Um, cause God knows the times I haven't paid attention. There we, there we go. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to tell you too, we were talking about social media. I recently had a reel go viral, like over 15 million people. And it is as simple as this. I'm literally talking about what is your body telling you? Like, what have you been ignoring about your body? Yeah. It's a simple thing. But how many times have we actually ignored what our body's telling us? And I don't mean just from a sickness space, yeah. but just, just the emotions alone. Because back to our Christmas day that we talked about is, are we shutting things out and shutting people out and shutting emotions out because the feelings are too uncomfortable? Like you mentioned about the people who feel like they're, they're drifting apart. Yeah. Or is it just that, you know, you, you, you want to feel it later because you're, you have basically blinders on feel it later because you feel, you, you believe if you feel that yeah. you'll be productive when okay. really our feelings, our emotions actually are fuel. Yeah. No, that's very true. That's very true. And I think a lot of people put blinders on. I see that all the time, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, and, and it's, it's hard because you know what, when you have emotions, you, you have to deal with those emotions. I feel because it's like, if, if you don't, if you don't deal with them, they get repressed. They're still there. They're still, yeah. they're still boiling in you. And, and after, after so long, I feel like, you know, you could become numb because you have all these emotions and then you lose track yeah. of who you are, how you feel, because there's so much going on. And, you know, you really have to, I think, address how you feel 
as it's happening and really mm, yeah. able to keep in touch with yourself. And, and I, I like that you mentioned about really understanding yourself and, and knowing who you are, because it's, it's very important. Like, I always feel like the body our you know, our spirit is always talking to us like the yes. intuition and, and, you know, I always feel like my heart is always talking to me and I can understand what my body's always telling mm-hmm. me. I feel like I get messages all the time and yeah. I feel like everybody has that power and we just have to tap into it. Yes. I mean, yeah, to your point, I mean, obviously the more we meditate, the more we slow down. I literally like there's, we literally, we're always, we're always transmitting, right? Something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're always receiving. It's just, is our channel able to actually really experience it? But I want to actually invite you. I'm going to back up just a second. You were saying it's important for people to deal with their emotions. Yeah. And even just saying deal with their emotions means it's almost like something that we need to go do versus something we experience. And so right. when I flip it from, I want to experience the day. Uh, my husband, we were in this conversation a couple of weeks ago. We had, we, we're meeting deadline and, and it was like, you know, we're going on date night. He's like, we're going to go do date night. And it was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm something that, that like you're going to do, like you're doing this, this thing versus experiencing me. Yeah. And I, a woman like you is made to be experienced. And so our emotions are to be experienced. And you know, Peter Levine, who wrote the book, Body Keeps Score, one of my favorite books about trauma and relationship and mm-hmm. to, to yourself is, is the body remembers, yeah. the body remembers. And so that's why we can smell a scent or we can hear, you know, hear something or, um, I mean, so it'll remember the the tough times, but also remember the good times back to how we started this conversation. Yeah. And I think that just giving ourselves permission to feel the feelings, um, mm-hmm to feel the grief, to feel the sadness, to feel the excitement, to feel the brag. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of myself. Like I'm so proud of me and actually, you know, honor you, which also does this girl. It also allows us to not have to look outside of ourselves. Right. It actually helps abolish and um, annihilate a lot of codependency when we actually like the person in the mirror. Yes. Oh, definitely. And I, even in my teachings, I, I have a picture all the time and I'll, I'll bring up a slide and I'll, I'll have a woman looking in the mirror and I'm like, do you like who you see? Do you like the reflection? And if not, then you need to do something about it because, you know, so there's so many people out there that look in the mirror and it's, they have a hard time seeing that reflection because they don't like the person they see in front of them. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we can't change. We have the ability to change. We have the ability to retrain our body, our mind, our spirit, and become that person. Absolutely. And and I believe too so much that we actually can go ahead and experience it, experience ourselves, experiencing ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's in the home that we want or whether it's in the relationships that we want, or whether it's in the the health of our body, we actually feel the feelings that I'd feel as if I was already there and we can like time hop there. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's so true. Um, The part about the mirror, I'll say one of my favorite practices, it's so simple, especially, I mean, we could, you and I could do it here if we wanted to, we would both just make ourselves, it's just, just, you would see me and we could do an eye gazing practice and I would have to know your name and we would go through and do some breaths together. And then what I see in you is you know, and what I see in you is, and, and then tears are flowing. And to some of your audience probably go, what the heck is she talking about? Yeah. But then there's the mirror practice. And maybe that's, that, maybe that's what I'll, uh, I'll give that as a practice for your, your audience, but I guide you through a mirror practice. And I have to tell you, that was one of the hardest things for me to do next to the joy part, because yeah. to look myself in the mirror, what I love about you is what I see in you is, because I realized like I didn't, I mean, I didn't dig myself as much as I thought I did. Right. No, right. I get you. I get you. Yeah. I think we all go through that in, in periods of our life. And sometimes we fall back and we we get back into those modes and we have to get ourselves back out because just because you move forward, you know, sometimes you can get, you know, life is full of obstacles. You can get knocked down and, you know, it could bring you back two steps and you got to just learn how to get yourself back up. And you got, you know, and you have to make those adjustments because there are times where I overcame something. And then I find myself falling back into it again, you know, and, and it's, th- it's those times where you have to be strong enough and you have to really look into yourself and say, who am I? What did I accomplish? You know, what, what about me? Do I love what about me? You know, you know, mm-hmm. look at your strengths and your positiveness. And, and, you know, I always say you can take one, you could take every negative thing that happened to you in life and you could pull out something positive from it. Absolutely. You know? 
totally making sure he's not going to bark. Uh, <laughs> I love that you said that too. And this is actually where that stage three friend is and why it's so great to be in, you know, like sister circle. And it's, I think that's what my signature course is the sisterhood. And it really is my favorite. I love mentoring people one-on-one and yeah. all the other pieces, but I love witnessing women just literally blossom over those five months that we spend together. And because they get to witness each other within the group and the, and the way the platform is. Yeah. Um, and then, and then they can do anything. So back to what I said about them being able to go out in the world and be more, make more, what have you, because the feminine wants to be seen. Yeah. Again, and money is the feminine and receivership is the feminine. The more that we can receive. Right. If I gave you a compliment or if you gave me a compliment and like, oh, I really, you know, I really love that necklace. And I'm like, oh, this silly thing. What? Oh, it's no big deal. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, I received that. Yeah. Uh, and you and I so naturally did that before we came on because we were like honoring each other. Uh, but that, that part about being seen. And so I would say too, to your point about knowing it from within, but yeah. you know, in the last couple of months, as I was going through, through something, I really realized, because this can be a lonely world, being a teacher, being a healer, being in the space, right? You know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, um, I recognize that I, I was not practicing what I, what I preach in the sense of, I really needed to be witnessed. Yeah. Witnessed, excuse me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. Um, he's not used to all these sounds. We were, we were Florida folks, like Florida folks on the river. So he's like, wow. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, so, but to be able to say, I, 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 I need to be witnessed and, um, and have women that will do that and not judge. I mean, that sounds so crazy. I wasn't raised that way. In fact, I don't, I love my mom, but if I called her and said, mom, I want to be witnessed. No, but she's just, she's got her limitations too. And some of us just don't even know. So right. to be a witness and I'll do that with my husband sometimes, you know, I just, so that way he doesn't try to fix it. I'll go, I just need to be witnessed. And then we'll, I'll say just, he'll set the clock for a few minutes and then he'll witness me. And sometimes I'm crying. Sometimes I need to you know get some anger out, not to say at him, but um, being witnessed is everything. So yeah. you can ask me to witness you anytime if you want to be. And then, or um, I need a brag, you yeah. know, I brag Sandy. And then I would just go, I brag you to be, you know, this inspiring woman who, who is, lives this unlimited life. I brag you to be a woman who is a connector. I brag you to be, and it's like, okay. And then we feel complete. We take a bow and we move on. And that's not codependent. That's actually like honoring your intuition. Like I call it husbanding yourself. Yeah. If you were the best husband in the world to yourself, how would you want to show up? Right. Uh, easier said than done. So yeah, a lot, I've shared a lot of like little, little, it's a bit, I, I practice is there, but it is really, it's, if John went away, my husband, you know, and I had to learn this when I was doing my healing journey. I went through a masculine cleanse, healed my relationship to the masculine, not just men. Most mm -hmm. people think that means that we're not going to have sex or something, but it's not even about that. It's actually right. honoring the masculine within and also out here in the world. And so uh, that really taught me a lot about ways that I was ejecting in my life and pretty leaky, um, not honoring myself, not, not that what didn't keep my word, but, you know, a little thing, a little slip here, a little slip there. Um and, but also not be rigid because the toxic masculinity is is, is pretty rigid. Yeah. So there's a beautiful counterbalance in, in that too. Yeah. Oh, that, that, you know, that's amazing. You know, it's, it's so true. It's so true. And, um, you know, I, I like how you also talked about how, you know, you know, our trauma in life and, and how, you know, um, how we, how we, we grow up. We, sometimes we, we look for things that we didn't have in our in wow. our childhood years, or we just, we are in an environment that that's all we know. And yeah. we tend yes. to repeat the behavior and yes. we tend to repeat. And we look for the same type of negative people because that's what we've been surrounded by. And, you know, we just, we, we, we were around that energy and then we, we, we look for that energy and we attract that energy. And it's really learning how to break that and, and, and get yourself to a higher level where you're looking, you're redirecting your energy towards a more positive and, and higher sense of, of being and living. Well, I can tell you from personal experience too. And I thank you for bringing that to, to the space. Um, 
that all that that's one hundred percent true, and 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 that and then yet remember the, the the body keeps score. And so to your point, there's an exercise I do with clients in my group about about that, like what it is that you desire. Are you showing up as that woman, as that girl? And our brain wants to keep us safe, not happy, and it will, to your point, want to go back to the very thing um, that we wanted to avoid, and we will almost recreate it sometimes in our life. And that's why, you know, I really do believe this: the, the last five percent of healing, if you want to like live in this sacred union with yourself and with yeah. you know, with Creator and such, is um, and with your partner, obviously, right. is recognize that last five percent is uh is going to this triggering that happens and notice that it's generally childhood wounds that comes up and if you're willing to stay the course with boundaries and guidelines can you heal those pieces and it's it is it's not easy and so um if i would have known what i know now you know back then i probably would have chosen differently perhaps or maybe not or what my you know, my son's dad and i would still be together because we're really great friends we live next door to each other. I've thrown his wife's bachelorette party years ago. You know, obviously there was something there, but yeah, that is so natural and it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. And then in some ways it does because what we resist will persist. Yeah. And what I always like to say is like, what is the it, trauma is the feeling trauma is not necessarily the event. It's the feeling that where our body is craving. Mm. It's a drug. So it's the feeling is a drug. So we have to not override it by drinking or gambling or eating or working right. um, to avoid. It actually is, it's like, take it to the mat. Like, will you, will you allow yourself to feel that? Because if you can sit with it and feel it, then, then we'll, we find that we can alchemize it. And on the other side of that, um, there's a practice I call moving what you're feeling because right especially if you're in your feminine, we're going to feel about 40 feelings within a two minute time period. If we're not we're like, we're stuck there. So, so moving what you're feeling allows you to actually expand, expand your body, expand your aura to be able to welcome, Oh, I'm feeling kind of crunchy. And then you move as crunchy, right? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm feeling jealous. And, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling hungry or whatever it is. And, and I tell you though, I say, this is, it, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. Because I didn't want to feel my body. If I had to feel, I had to, I had to deal with some things. And so, yeah. you know, I, I, at some point it was like, not another minute more. My goal is to, is to meet women where they are and help them collapse time, energy, and money. So they don't have to hit that rock bottom. Yeah. Um, perhaps they can actually start right where they are and feel it. But my, my, my first workshop I ever went to that was really about the body. I literally showed up at the, at the, and I love workshops, girl. I love them. I showed up and I, I, the first thing that they did, and I don't teach like this, the way this was taught, but there, but, but because I like to like ease women into it. Very yeah. gently, Cause I find that, you know, my, my ideal client really is a, is a woman who, you know, she knows who she is mm -hmm. and she has some ups and downs. Um, she just knows there's an itch that needs to be scratched. She's mm -hmm. not necessarily already out there in Sedona or doing all that. That's fine as she is, but generally it's like the, the, the almost amazing everyday woman who actually realized that there's something that's missing and she needs to reclaim it. She just is not sure what it is. Right. So um, I, I literally walked in, looked around and I really did not like women. I realized too, their mm -hmm. energy, their, their happiness, their giddiness, their, they talked a lot. They were so inefficient, <laughs> like dealt with things like, oh my God, get to the point. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm totally, totally feminine now, obviously, but um, at the core, but I remember walking in to that, that uh, ballroom and um, it was a big convention. Mm -hmm. Mass and I was like, oh no, I literally went back to the, back to my room, got my stuff. I texted my roommate and I'm like, I'm out. Like, I'm <laughs> out. It took me another year to actually realize. Um, and actually it was about a girlfriend of mine. She literally took my credit card and I was like, you're going, she like put it on her credit card you're going. And I'm so grateful for that stage three friend. Cause she said, you're going to continue to go from workshop to workshop, read books and podcasts, blah, blah, and you're never going to feel it. And so and I think we, I mean, we must feel to heal. Um, yeah. We just have to pay attention to, are you stuck in the feeling? And if you're feeling so much joy, you're probably bypassing. Yeah. Like always feeling joy. For example, like that, 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 that positive all the time. What is that? There's actually called something. What is it called when someone's always positive? I call it fake. <laughs> <laughs> well, then there's that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then there's that. I guess. I'm, yeah. Th and then there's that because it is, it's not real. Zig Ziglar says that too. If you're always on, if you're always on, you're probably on something. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? 
So, I mean, I think there's something there to uh, acknowledge about, um, you know, even someone who's thinking about cancer is instead of ignoring it and and, and praying it up, which is fine, yeah. but it's also something to go, this sucks. Yeah. Like this, this hurts. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, we can be, be mad at it, but then honestly, it almost needs to be loved in a way, not yeah. it like as a child, but more of like, I see you. I know you're here because I didn't honor something. I didn't honor something in my body. And that means I wasn't honoring, um, you know, source. And so thank you for waking me up. Right. And now it's time for you to go like, bye-bye. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it sounds so goofy, but I, I know for me when I, and I just want to cry actually, uh, when I think about feeling um, disconnected from my husband, for example, and you know, that feeling inside and, you know, sometimes I may go to him directly, but yeah. generally, I really try. I really, and I mean, I really, really want to stay embodied and feel that feeling because that's something else inside of me. Perhaps, yeah, and there really is something going on. So I'm not just like that real I mentioned. I'm not saying ignore. Yeah, self reliant. Um, because what I find is our our partners, the more primary masculine one, because it's the same with same sex relationships. Yeah, they want our energy. They mm-hmm. want our full expression. If you're with someone who doesn't then we need to have a conversation because you, you attracted that person into your life who probably wants you more, you know, Yeah. Zoom Redwood and such. So there's so much there to unpack. I mean, I've learned so much through the years and, and I live it and I breathe it. And, you know, I will say the more embodied we are, the more we feel. And so the more we feel, the more open we are to feeling. And so it's a matter of also protecting your energy. Yeah. Um, whether you, someone deems themselves as an empath or not, honor that a feminine being is a feeling creature. Right. If you're finding that you're blocking money or blocking creativity or whether it's a writer's block or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, it generally has to do, your, we, we probably are not in touch with this vessel that God gave us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And I feel healing is, it, it's a painful process, but then when you come over the hump, it's, it's a, a wonderful feeling, you know, but I feel like when you're in the process of healing those emotions, it can be very painful and traumatizing to the mind. But then once you get over that hump and you've gotten in touch and you really realize the root cause of why you're feeling like this and you're able to figure out a solution and then you get all those emotions out of you, it brings you to a whole new part of yourself in a whole new world and you're able to actually move forward in a different light yeah and you touched on something beautifully um and i think it's a matter of getting curious i think the more we can get curious i think if more partners can get curious with us when we're not acting right so to speak like when our body's not acting right or what have you they go hmm what does this mean yeah trying to solve it right away right to experience it back to are you are you experiencing yourself even experiencing whatever it is not to be immersed in you know the disease or the breakup or the what have you because let's face it i'm sure we all know people that have done that i know i probably has in the past um it it, i had an ex-partner who he was um he was diagnosed with ms Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I'm like, you are, you do not have MS. I mean, I was like, you don't, you don't. I said, don't even claim that. Like, no, it's like, no, but what did you see? So I, and this is my masculine kicked in and I was like, no, I'm not going to allow you to claim that. Like, no. And so this is being an Oracle, by the way, for the for partner it's yeah. the thing I teach. And I'm like, no. And so we went and saw another brain specialist and they literally just looked at his brain for a second. It was one little speck. Okay. His whole family like latched onto it that he had MS. And I'm not saying that, I mean, it could have been that, but it wasn't. Right. But, but because the whole family got a lot of attention from it, yeah. three eggs are born when they, they don't feel like they're enough. And then all of a sudden they're sick and then everybody's loving on them. Mm-hmm. Comedians are born, right? Yep. They don't feel like they're enough and they say a joke and everybody's laughing. Next, you know, they're always cutting, they're always like saying jokes. Yeah. Um, Working is the same thing. So, um, you know, be, someone being highly sexual can be the same thing. Um, it's fascinating, right? How we're always in a space primarily wanting to be safe and healing. Healing doesn't have to be arduous. I always say it can also be fun. And yes. I make sure I'd really, I really love to make things fun while we're also being serious. And that allows for, um, again, that little girl to come out and play and also just feel whatever she's feeling because kids will pick, will pitch a temper tantrum and they're not thinking I need to not do this right now. They're feeling it. And I think 
we can get a little more back to those moments. I mean, not, you know, not pitching a fit in the middle of a boardroom, for example, but maybe, and I have this happen with women, they may go in a stall. Yeah. Because like, mm -mm. that's just being honest. Right. Just being honest. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I, you know, tell me a little about the services that you do. Cause I want to hear more about like some of the stuff that you have that you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I mentioned the sisterhood and that's my signature program. And it's a, a five month program that actually includes an event. And, um, you know, we work through awarenesses. Uh, we're talking about the body. Obviously we're talking about emotions. We're talking about childhood pieces, the mother wound, the father wound. Um, I'm talking about the 10 women that live inside of you and you get to know them and embody them, uh, bringing back that sacred relationship vision, what it is that really, you know, what it is that you really are about, um, dealing with the masculine feminine energetics. I mean, there's a cornucopia of things that we work with, a lot of somatic work and such, but really about, you know, teaching a woman to unapologetically really rewild, like I said, to magnetize that deep love within them and understand that that full bodied expression is where, is where it, it's at. Um, and, and no judgment. So the sisterhood is a space where we go deep um, and we meet, meet every two weeks. And, and like I said, we have an event and women come out of this, like making lifelong friends, not everybody. I always teach, I ask, I teach women how to share a complaint to, mm -hmm. to it, it, we call it a practice space because you are practicing, like you practice yoga, like yeah. you, practice, you, know, you, you practice the piano. Um, and it's, 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 it's magnificent. I'm, I'm really proud of it. I've had women from, from 19 to 75 in a sisterhood before. Wow. Uh, and so from all demographics and such, and, you know, whether they're single or they've been married 30 years or they're just coming out of a breakup, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And then generally women will work with me, it seems for a couple of years and not because the work doesn't work, but because they, they're going on to the next phase of their life, whether they've gone through a divorce um, or I'm, I just got invited to two weddings to some of my past clients, um, or there's a baby or, you know, what have you. Um, and then we have a, 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 a my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I have a program that I mentioned earlier that was the sacred respect. And that's a self-study program that is about respecting the masculine within, but also it's a 30 day reset to how to basically kickstart and restart any relationship that you're in with the masculine within yourself, within your partner. And um, I, I have a, a link for you for that as well. That That's one of my favorite programs because it really is my story around the masculine within and how I wasn't respecting them out there. And I have some right. self-study programs too, uh, but really it's around, my curriculum's the same from one to the next. Some of it's just a little more uber focused here. Yeah. And um, it starts with a call. I mean, some of those programs you can buy, just purchase online, um, but they can go to my website and take a look. And we, I also have a couples program um, that my husband and I actually will work with couples too. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, yeah. what, do you, what is your website? Sandysembler.com. Oh, wow. This is great. Now, you know, if you had to give people some tips and on, on practices they could do at home to start finding them, their selves and start figuring out what they're missing in life, like what are some of the things that people could start doing at home to, to really dive deep into themselves and figure out what is going on in themselves and how, the, how they could attach to that maybe teenhood, you know, that teenager in them, how, yeah. how to attach and, and figure out, you know, who they are as a person and what they need and what they're missing and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I love that question. Um, you know, as I get to know a woman, like I mentioned earlier, I, I feel into like, what's best for the moment. I can give practices, especially what you're going through, right. That that's always helpful, but a great practice really is, is, is to honestly just to slow down and allow yourself just to notice your breath. Notice if your clavicle is rising or falling, but just, to, and breath work is very masculine, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, just allow yourself to like to breathe deep in the body, feel the front part of the body. Mm -hmm. um, something else, a great practice, a somatic practice is literally shaking, like literally shaking the anxiety. I mean, three minutes of shaking and you, you get up, you shake everything. You shake your tongue, shake your head, shake it all out. I mean, there's, it literally, you'll feel the anxiety leave you. It's fascinating. Wow. Um, Another great practice and all of these, some of these are on my Instagram and such. Um, I know Carrie will send you all the things, but um, I find one, like I love movement. Like I love to get, help women get more into their bodies, yeah. but there's a way, honestly, um, you can start with just staring at your hands and then noticing your hands and falling in love with your hands and see your hands and see the wrinkles and 
see the crevices and like touch yourself in a way that you probably haven't been touched in a really long time. Right. Right. Uh, I don't think I've ever met a woman that when we're doing movement and I'm leading the movement, uh uh-uh, is is to have them um, just to touch their own face. Yeah. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps because it's just, it's so simple and we have it within. And that's why any woman who's having intimacy problems at home, we talk about her own pleasure practice and such. So there's a wide range. I mean, we can talk about the basics of somatics, of course, but yeah. then when we're in our intimate containers, we will go there sometimes and talk about, you know, intimacy if we want to. It doesn't always go there, uh, but there's some, some special practices like your, your five senses. And But if there's a trauma space, you feel triggered. Um, something great that's very grounding is to literally, um, assuming you're not driving, but you can do it while you're driving, is to you know, take a deep breath, feel the breath just tumble, you know, down to your belly. And, you know, my name is Sandy. I live in Florida. It's 6.48 p.m. I smell the woods. I hear Lucas's collar jingling. I can feel my tush on my meditation cushion. Mm-hmm. You know, I and I can taste it. So you, and, it, and literally it's just grounding. And you can do that when you're driving. Um, there's yeah. just little practices. That's what I mean, like practical practices. Now I love to go deep into like the body and all of that. But for me, it was, you've had to first be able to feel your body. And if you're yeah. in panic mode or, or stressed, you're never going to feel anything because you're not supposed to, because you're, yeah. brain, you're, you know, you're getting chased by the saber toothed tiger. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's an interesting fact I'll share this and I know we're wrapping up, but when I've, I find that whenever, um, the, a, a woman's partner like or the more masculine partners traveling mm-hmm. and they, they leave on Sunday night and come back Thursday. Yeah. There is, um, it, it is primal within a, within a, a woman that we will, we, we get into this mama bear mode, which is the masculine role. Cause we're in protection mode. Yeah. Like, I'm here like by myself in this area. And I'm like, I'm obviously a little on guard. You know, I literally like I've got, I mean, it's like I've got my, I've got my, little, my little knife over here. And I mean, like, it's, it's funny, but it's not funny because I'm, I'm protecting myself. My husband's not here and right. Uh, right. But, but it literally is proven. So he leaves on, 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 on Monday or maybe she leaves and then, um, then comes home on Thursday and it's like, Oh God, he's they're here or she's here because whoever's staying home with the kids and managing things, they're, they're doing it their way. Right. And then their partner comes in. It's like, wait a minute. And then that partner doesn't feel like they belong. Yeah. And there, there starts the little, the little schism of things just aren't working, not working. Right. That's not really true. There's a way I teach women that work outside the home that there's a practice that we can, we can develop that you literally feel yourself starting to soften. Yeah. And then by the time you get home, the masculine in all of us needs about 10 to 20 minutes of just chill time before we hot rolls. And if we can teach our family how to love us better because we teach ourselves how to love us better first. And that's the main things that I do with women is how can I love you better? Like, how can you love yourself better? And we get to, we really feel that and experience it. That will change things on a dime. Right. To be able to recognize that. And um, and that's less talking about it, but just feeling it. So um, these are just some simple, some simple little gifts, nuggets for for the people that are listening. And yeah, I mean, it's it's I love women now. I love them. And I was with my advanced women last night and you know, bringing them through, you know, a few, a few moving emotions. And we have another sisterhood I'm taking applications for. Um, we start in January. So I'm doing like a slow a slow roll and I, I interview them. And right now I like to interview everybody because I just love connecting with people. And yeah. Nice and sweet. Um, yeah. If you're, can I give a discount code for your, for your listeners mm-hmm. for, for one of the group? Okay, great. I'll go we'll yeah. get a discount code too. I'll tell my, my team to do that as well. Yeah. There's, there's something magical. I didn't actually do a sisterhood the last six months, which normally I have them always rolling. I just wanted to be with my advanced women and I was really working, you know, on a few things to bring out to the world. And I, I missed it because I love witnessing women get it. Yeah. Love witnessing them get watered and nourished. And then them, even when it gets uncomfortable, teaching them how to hold their own pose, right? You know, while they allow themselves to feel the feelings and it ain't always easy, but I say, if you would give me six months, you know, and you'll, you will, you will be committed. 
I right. promise you will, you will come out the other side, you know, a, a, a different person, yeah, um, a more enriched person, more aware person, but also a lot more fun. Right. A lot more fun. A lot more fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This sounds yeah. awesome that they can find the registrations and everything on your website. The, on the website, yes, sandysembler.com. And then what we'll do, do you have like show notes? How do you do that? Because I'll have, I'll have we'll, we can give a code or they can, they can just mention. I'm going to put everything in the description. And then so um, where the video is, if they go into the description, everybody will see the codes and they'll see all the information okay. and they'll see your website and how to contact awesome. you. K- Carrie will email you. Um, I know that she had asked me before I caught, popped on tonight a few things, but I, I said, Carrie, you know me, I feel into it and I'll say one thing and it changes because I'm connecting with you. Um, so I'll let her, I'll send her a, a quick note and uh, let her know that she'll, she'll give that to you. If you don't get it, you, you can let me know. But yeah, I'd love to be able to honor your, your guests. Cause if they're anything like you and I imagine that they, you magnetize people that are a lot like you, mm-hmm. I would love to get to know more women like you for six months and take uh... them through this magical journey for sure. It sounds like an amazing program. I, I, it really, it sparks my attention. It really, it's I was thinking, me. I was thinking that too. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, again, because it's like the, you are, you are on a mission. You're already accomplished so much. What I would love is that for you to be able to experience even more with not by doing less, like the four hour work week, not that it's not a technique it's yeah. a way of being because you're already, you're already there and you're so magnetic. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it is beautiful. It's, I, I can't imagine being any other way. I can promise you that a few times in the last few years I've attempted it mm-hmm. and it, my body wasn't, it really was like a shutdown, especially when we're going through menopause. I mean, I won't yeah. ask for the conversation. I felt like my body was betraying me. Yeah. It was like, what was that? And I had right. I had an eating disorder in college and, you know, which is all about control and mm-hmm. talk about feeling out of control. When you love your body, you talk to your body and it's still saying like, I don't know who you are, but I'm taking over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. that's a whole other conversation we could have. And I, I think that we need to just, you know, love our body as it's going through all these changes because it, it, it can calibrate back. But again, like we talked about earlier, do we want it to go back. Or yeah. do we want to honor the infinite wisdom that lives within us and then accept it for where it's at while we're one foot in gratitude and one foot in desire? Yes. Mm-hmm. The cha-cha-cha of life. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a great You're way so much fun. It. You're so much fun. <laughs> I'm so happy that, that we connected today. Oh, so am I. You know, this has been great. I, I thank you so much for being on the show. And mm-hmm. I can't wait to have you back because I, I hope, you know, you'll come back and we can talk about, you know, that bodies and menopause and going through the changes. And I think that would be a great discussion for our next uh, podcast. I think people will will love to hear what you have to say because you look at things from a, such a energetic and such a positive perspective. And you you have a different way of, of approaching things that I think is really healthy for both men and women, actually, yeah. Even though you focus on women, you know, if, if men opened themselves up to this idea, you know, it would be such a huge change in the way men and women can interact in a more positive way, you know? Yeah. And I'll say one more thing, just to leave it. Cause I, I talked about the, the women when we feel safe, we were safe, heard, understood and all that. Yeah. When we, women will generally, what will happen if a man feels our criticism, our closure, right? And, and generally that's what a woman will do when they're trying to motivate someone. Yeah. Else. Um, it never works. And so those are like those little tips to think about. That's, that's a whole show in itself we can chat about because yeah. we all do it, it's primal. So we have to change those patterns. So yeah. thank you so much for having me. This was really a blast and what a great way to, to end my day. So oh. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been really wonderful. I, I, yeah. I feel so fed. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes, definitely. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.